Show of hands, how many of you ladies, when you got married, wore a veil? Wow, that's a lot more than I thought. Why? <laughs> Tradition, custom. It's supposed to be like, there's, there's something pure behind it. I didn't know you I mean, before you got married. It's a symbol of purity. <laughs> oh, answer me this, anybody. I don't remember. I remember that Alicia and I had to do a, a blood test at the health department before we got married. Is that still a thing? I know I was telling Maggie about the whole thing, and I said, I guess they don't do it anymore. So it's like, you, you never know. Maggie was like, well, I won't. I want my husband to do it. She said, because, you know, we're supposed to be pure when we get married. We want to know. Um, you know, we we'll be getting no damaged goods. I mean, the doctors know about it. That's how it should be. Um, have y'all ever seen, I don't know what you would call them. Um, belly dancers wear these veils <laughs> to hide their face. That's a what? It's for mystery, right? They could be ugly. They could be. And see, that's, don't get ahead of me, Jenny. That's why I was wondering. <laughs> There's a whole culture of folks that are made to wear a veil. And it's, it's so that can't nobody see and they're supposed to be modest. And, and you don't know if it's a good-looking gal or, you know, a non-good-looking gal under there. And maybe that's why some of the guys make their wives wear them. I be telling everybody that my wife is hot. <laughs> I put this hood over her head, make her walk around with that. She can be the hottest chick in the world. <laughs> Here's the thing. When you have stuff that is veiled, be it a bride or you know, a wife or, or anything that is veiled, a lot of times it's to hide something. It's not because it is so awesome. It's to be respected. In today's culture, it's because uh, we don't want to see that. We don't need to look at that because that, that may scare you. There may be something hideous behind there, so we're just going to veil it. Um, a lot of times the truth is veiled. The truth is hidden because people don't want to know or hear the truth. I will tell you this, oh, there's a lot of truth on our church sign out here that uh, Miss Sandra put up, and it was talking about how, uh, you know, the gospel can't be shared or it's, it's being watered down, and uh, we can't be sugarcoated, and the truth needs to be revealed, and y'all, this morning in Sunday school, our Sunday school lesson was about keeping the Sabbath day holy, and it was a very convicting one because set aside a whole day for the Lord. Um, I'm talking about the whole day for the Lord. And it's, it's something that's challenging to all of us because, believe it or not, there are places that people go on Sunday. There are things that people have to do and there's things that people choose to do on Sunday. And it's, I'm not saying it's impossible, but by choice. We have a hard time doing that. The truth is that we are supposed to keep the Lord's day holy. The whole day. I mean, he gave us seven of them, so let's give one of them to him. The veil of truth is you just do your best. Okay? And 
God will appreciate whatever you give. That's the veil truth. And that's about like it's hiding. You chick showed up at your wedding, y'all were hiding. Hiding behind lace. Like we can't see y'all behind that lace. We seen you. Seen you the whole time. And that's funny. I've been to many weddings, been standing up there with the groom. Homeboy's hands are sweating like crazy. And there she comes, and somebody snags it. I've seen one get ripped right off. That was hilarious. First, she gonna launch it. She don't want to be sitting back there. She, she's not a middle of the church kind of chick. She's a front row Baptist. I like the babies. Oh, you put the veil right here. And then when they go to launch, boom, trying to catch it. It happens to all babies. All babies are doing that. That's why you don't lay on your back and pull them up over you. Gravity. Right? And then you wind up failed. Yeah, failed in something. Now, with all that being said, we understand what veiled is. Veiled is covered. Alright? And we want to make sure that the glory that God has imparted onto us is unveiled. Okay? It is not veiled. It is revealed. All right? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, a lot of times you have an unveiling, and that unveiling is when you finally reveal this thing that has been talked about or, or worked on for a really long time. The glory of God is... It's just the honor and, and just the awesomeness of God. And God doesn't keep it all for himself, even though he deserves it all. But he shares it with us, and he puts his glory on us. And we as children and believers of God, God wants us to be carriers of his glory. So we're supposed to be going around being representatives of Jesus Christ and sharing God's glory with the world. Now, when you walk in a room, do people automatically look at you as a representative of Jesus? You know, or are you lighting up the place? Are you making the vicinity that you're in more holy? Or is it kind of veiled? I mean, you can either brighten up the place or you can darken the place. And you're probably going to do one or the other. You're probably not going to go in there and mediocre because you're there, you're present. So automatically you're taking up more of the air, right? You bring it in your own odors and your own sounds and things like that. You're contributing to the space. So you're there, you're present. Are you lifting it up or bringing it down? No. Paul says to the church court in 2 Corinthians 3, and we'll start verse 7, he says, now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory, fading though as it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? Now, let me explain to you what's going on here. Paul is referring to when Moses went up on Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. He was in the presence of God so much that God's glory was shining on him to the point where Moses' skin started glowing. Okay? Now, when Moses came down off of that, Paul is saying that uh, the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. Fading though it was. It was already fading by the time he got to the bottom of the mountain. So if that amount of glory from being in the presence of God a temporary glory 
that he was bringing down and had already started fading and they couldn't even look at it, how much more glory should be shining through us that are constantly indwelled by God? See, Moses was simply in his presence. We have God living inside of us. Right? So how much more glory should people be seeing in us than they did in Moses on, on Mount Sinai? It should be greater, I think. Don't you think? I mean, just the simple physics of it. You know, I mean, I think, I don't know, it may not even be physics. Is it physical? I mean, he was, it's like, dude in the tanning bed. Okay? Oh, that's a bad picture. But anyway, he gets out of it and he's glowing because he stayed in the tanning bed for a while. All right? Now he looks like Mr. Krabs. All right? And then you get this other guy. He's been in the sunlight. I'm talking about the real sun, like it is now, where it's middle 90s and cookie cookie, all right? But he's been in it for a couple of weeks, and he's still in it. And he comes up to you, and, and homeboy's just crispy, all right? And he's just, you know, he's toasty fresh, glowing, and, and it's just, hair's already been turned blonde because there ain't no more pigment in it, and he's just, there he is, you know, just like a, like an island guy. He's going to look different from the one that was temporarily in there because he is permanently living in there. Let me, let me try to make this point a little bit better. When I see somebody with a real tan, okay, I'm like, now that's a real tan. That's somebody that works outside and is in the sunlight. It's a real tan. When I see somebody with a painted on tan, okay, <laughs> your ankles won't be streaky if it's for real. Okay? Um, I seen someone the other night that was the same exact color, and I'm colorblind, same exact color as, as our president. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not natural. It can't be natural. It was like, I was on the doctor? No? Um, straight up Cheeto R? You know? And I was wondering to myself, I was like, this can't be natural. This can't be real. Undoubtedly, probably had some sun, right? Right? Probably had some sun, but the hue, the hue was a little askew. You wouldn't even marry. You, you know the orange which I speak of. Oompa Loompa. You remember the Charlie Factory? They had the little orange guy. They wasn't tan. They were orange. Right. That's that's like kind of like the glory that Moses had for a moment. It's like, that's pretty impressive what you've done here. But look at him. We should be having like some all natural Hawaiian tropic type brownery. All right? That's the kind of stuff. Like, whoa, now this, this is legit. This is impressive. Okay. If you try to get the fake glory and it's not real, people see right through that. People know whether it's, it's the glory of God on you or if you're just pretending or if you're faking it and it's not the truth. Case in point, I've seen an episode of a TV show called Friends. And one of the guys on there, he tried to get a spray on tan, but he didn't know how it worked. So he goes in there, and what you're supposed to do is go in this booth and just stand there. All right? So the buzzer goes off, sprays him down. He's like, okay, good. So he turns around. So he sprayed the other side, and then he sprays his front again. And he winds up with, what was it, like four or eight coats? 
Yeah, he went and got four more because he still didn't know how it worked. So he had eight coats on the front, none on the back. You know, he was a New Yorker. I guess he's a big fan of the black and white cookies. Um, it was just flip or flop. You know, he was, he was messed up. It was very obvious that that was not real. I mean, y'all seen the truck driver come up to you before? The left arm is nice and brown and everything, and the right arm is white. Super white. The left arm is naturally brown. And then they pull the shirt up, and all of a sudden it's super white. Whoa! That one ain't seen no light. Moses had a tail? Wasn't he already brown? Yeah, he was. So we're not really talking about a tan. That's just a whole bunch of gibberish. Get you to understand where we're coming from. When the glory of God is on you, people see it, and they know whether it is real or not. Now, in the Old Testament, Moses brought down the Ten Commandments, and it was the law. And what he was bringing down was death. Okay? Because the law was basically a manifestation of death in that all of a sudden all of these rules were there in writing that you had to live by or you were basically spiritually dead. That's what you was. Now, since you were spiritually dead for breaking the law, you were cut off from God. You didn't get any glory at all that you could give to God because of disobedience. So that's what the law provided human beings was just dead. Okay? Now Jesus comes along. And Jesus says, I have come to fulfill the law so that you may have life and life abundant. So Jesus is bringing with him a new covenant, a new way. One new rule. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. He said the second commandment is, is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus is bringing about love and mercy and grace. And that fulfills the law. No longer are you having to live by a set of rules to be holy and to receive the glory of God. No, no. <laughs> now, because you have received the glory of God, huh, you are obedient. It's just totally opposite. Verse number 8 says, Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? The Holy Spirit indwells in us. And basically, this is, this is how it works. When you are lost, there is an emptiness inside you. Okay? You are born with an emptiness inside you. When you understand that you are lost and that you need to be saved, you ask Jesus to save you, forgive you of your sin, wash you clean. At that point, the Holy Spirit of God, which is like God's soul, comes and lives inside of you. And he indwells in you. And when you got the light of the universe, okay, this was the light that fed the plants before he ever made the sun. When you got the light of the universe living inside of you, it's going to show. Right? Y'all ever had a flashlight in the tent? You ain't hiding that. Just because you're in the tent, that don't mean people outside the tent can't see the flashlight. You know, I mean, you'd have to be a moron to be sitting up in there like, eh, they can't see this. <laughs> Everybody's seeing it. You know why? Because it's there. So that tells me that the light that is inside of you, Jesus Christ, if you are saved, the light is going to shine. The ministry of the Spirit it's going to be a lot more glorious than just the law. And just, hey, 
There's Ten Commandments. Follow them. All right? Don't be killing nobody. Obey your mama and daddy or they'll kill you. Um, and there's eight others. All right? Don't be looking at other folks' stuff and be wanting it. All right? Be satisfied with what you got. There's a bunch of commandments like that. It's to make you better. Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. Don't be looking at somebody else's boyfriend or girlfriend and being like, hmm. All right? Satisfied with your own. Now, if you follow these rules, you'll shine a little. Hmm. Ain't like that no more. Now you've been forgiven of your sins. The Holy Spirit's living inside of you. And that causes you to follow these things. You just, it ain't even like you're trying. It's just who you are now. You've been changed from the inside out. And the glory is shining all around you. Woo! Now the Spirit's ministry is a lot more glorious than it used to be. It says, verse 9, if the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what is, for what was glorious, has no glory now in comparison with the surpassing glory. Glory, 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 glory. The law brought glory to man on the face of Moses, and now, whoo, now you can't hide the glory. It's, it's all over the place. Jojo, I see some glory. All you got to do is look at it and say her name out loud. And all of a sudden, like, I don't really know what glory is, but okay. Mm -hmm. Get all shy acting, right? Mm -hmm. What happened to your hat? Kelly had a perfect little, like, uh, bowler hat. When she came in, it was half gone. Was that it? That was in your hair? Anyway, it was it was glorious. Fast as bone. Fast as bone there. I had never seen a bowler hat. Have you ever had a moment of your life when you knew that, man, this, I'm being blessed right now, like, for real, for real blessed. And you recognize it? You see the glory coming out of you? Have you seen the glory coming out of you? Have you prayed for something and, and God answered your prayer? Have you? I mean, when that happens, it, it has a, it, it gives you a kind of a feeling. Like the God of the universe is He's listening to me. He's, he's talking to me. He's responding to me. He's answering me. He's giving to me. This is this is glorious. Like, exactly. That's what it is. It's glory. What do you do with that stuff? Just give it back to him. God's giving you as much glory as you can stand, trying to fill you up and shine you up. So that the world is not a dark place. And all he wants you to do with it is give it right back to you. It's a cycle that is meant to increase us. Not weigh us down or burden us. The law was a burden. Because it was a set of rules that you had to follow. Living under grace is a privilege. That changes who you are. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I, I, I'm, I'm getting kind of out of here. Verse number 11 says, And if what was fading away came with glory, talking about the law, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? That means the glory now of Jesus Christ is much greater than the glory of. Trying to live under the law. Now we got grace. So Paul says in verse 12, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We're not like Moses who would put a veil over his face to keep 
the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. Moses had to veil fading glory. The light was fading. The glory was fading. And it was still too bright for the people because they were living under the law. Now we're living in the age of grace, the church age here on earth, and now people need to be blinded by the light. Now I got this song in my head. Lived up like a new one. You know that song? I didn't ever think about that song being spiritual. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Blinded by That's a church song. <laughs> I didn't know until about six years ago it said ribbed up like a goose and understand what that meant. Like a little goose goose with a 32 forward or something. Is that what that is? Is that what a goose goose is? We'll just go with that. Move along. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are blinded by the light. Um, Verse 14, Paul said, but their minds were made dull. Talking about the Israelites that were looking at Moses' face. Their minds were made dull, for to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It's not been removed because only in Christ is that veil taken away. So you are given a limited knowledge about who God is and what God wants as far as his will for your life if you're trying to live under the law. Because there is a finite set of rules found in the Old Testament that if you try to live by all of them, that's still not going to produce um, complete holiness that grace can bring. Okay? With Jesus living inside of you, holiness is obtainable. Righteousness can be done. You can be glorious. It's a lot easier than just little notches of glory. Okay? Verse 15 says, Even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil covers their heart. Because not too often when you read just the law and don't mention Jesus, it's very limited about the glory that God is going to show. That's why when I preach out of the Old Testament, from page one, where it says, in the beginning, Jesus was there. <clears throat> and to fail to mention Jesus Christ in any part of the Old Testament is to fail the Word of God, to hide part of the truth. The Word of God is 100% all about Jesus because the Word was Jesus. The Word is Jesus. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning, Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus Christ on every page. Right? Even the Song of Solomon. Every page. Now, when a veil covers up something, it is hiding. You wouldn't think that as a Christian we would ever want to hide Jesus, right? This verse number 16, whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So if you have turned to the Lord and you have made a decision to follow him and be your Lord and Savior, then the veil is taken away. And now things are revealed in your life, in your heart, and the glory of the Lord is shining through. Verse 17 says, now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom to not have to follow rules. You've been, Logan, you're going to love this. You don't have to follow a set of rules to be holy. You want to please God? Then live by faith. <laughs> Best kid in the world 
ain't got to be told what to do. They know what they're supposed to do, and they just do it. You understand? Having to repeatedly be told the rules in hopes that it'll stick, or a light will go off, or something like that. That's not obedience. That's not love. It's not honor and respect, and it's showing glory. What is it? It's just veil. And it's just, it's just not good. It's, I would dare say it's, it's funky. <laughs> What's glory about? But man, when the change goes off, and, and all of a sudden a person knows, say like, your kid's been taught, and it knows what the rules are, and Following the rules ain't even a choice anymore. Now it's just who we are. It's what we do. You ain't got to tell me do not commit murder. I'm not a murderer. So I have the freedom to live my life without being worried about a sin falling on me like a piano. I'm not worried about it because that's not who I am. I'm not a sinner anymore. I'm not under the yoke or the burden of sin anymore. Jesus is taking that away from me. I'm just going to shout. Like collected soul, that's what I will do. I will shout. Come on and shout. Verse 18 says, And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. We are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So, if you have been saved, and God, his Spirit is living inside of you, look at what this says. If you have been unveiled to the world, God has taken your soul and Put his spirit in there, and he has just, ta-da! He has unveiled you to the world. Now the world sees you for who you really are. You're a child of God, and you should be shining. I'm talking about you should be walking around like that big old crab from a woman. So shiny. What is that? <laughs> you woke up with that one, right? You're like, more water? God has unveiled us as his children, his church, to the world. And we should be shining like a light on a hill. Now, you wouldn't put a lit candle under your bed, would you? I mean, you're going to catch your house on fire. Right? Yeah, so, probably, you know, um, i tell you how to solve that. Buy a memory foam mattress and just put it on the floor. Kids won't hide nothing under the bed. Well, not much. It had to be kind of flat. But it wouldn't be clean up your room and then just break it all under the bed. God wants the glory that he has placed on us through the indwelling of his Holy Spirit out in the world. That's what he wants. So y'all, this is not evangelism. This is discipleship. This is who we're supposed to be. Okay? It is ever increasing this glory. You know, there's an old saying that it's like, you know, I want to be more like Jesus every day. He wants you to be more like him every day. He wants to fill you with more glory every day. Look here. It'd be great if once you got saved, he just filled your tank up, and that was it. But you're learning more about him every day. You're learning more about yourself every day. You're learning more about how to live in this world with other people every day. So it is an ever-increasing glory. You overcoming stuff and and learning things and becoming better. 
And all glory to God. Isn't that what we say? All glory to God. Now, he didn't brought it to you and put it in you, so now all glory to God. We get this thing going, and all of a sudden this thing is going to start spinning and working and going in the way that he has designed it to go to the point where it can't be stopped. I don't know. Glory factory. That would be cool. Remember when we first started, I said, when people around you are great, would you lighten up the place? Maybe people would start calling you a glory factory. I never really call it a glory factory. Yeah, it sounds a little weird today. But it's not. So are you ready to let God unveil you or unveil something in you and through you? If you are, what has been keeping the veil? What has been burdening you and shackling you and keeping you from being all that God wants you to be? Think about that for a minute. And if there's anything that you need to pray about, take this moment right here to pray.